Hello and welcome to another edition of Frightfully Forgotten's Trash or Treasure. I'm the trash. <laughs> I'm the treasure. Today we're going to be talking about Evil Dead Rise. Yeah. And is it trash or treasure? The movie starts off, you see the classic shot of... <laughs> And then it just turns out to be a drone that someone's <laughs> flying. Which I kind of like the way they <laughs> kind of baited you there. And we learn that three people are at a cabin. It turns out that one of the people is uh, sick and she's possessed by the evil dead. Then it starts again. One day earlier. In this high rise apartment building. Then we get introduced to the mom Ellie and her three kids and also her sister Beth. And her sister Beth comes to visit Ellie because she's having some problems. And we learned that the building is being torn down and everybody has to evict. Ellie sends the kids out to go get pizza. These kids look way too young to drive, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Like, what, these kids are driving? <laughs> they come back with a pizza and an earthquake happens and shakes the whole building. The parking lot in the basement, there's this big crack. One of the kids goes down in there and it's actually like this library with all these old hidden books. Crosses hanging and mm -hmm. there's like a tomb. A book. Yeah. Bound in leather. <laughs> Necronomicon. <laughs> and he also grabs a bunch of like LPs, a bunch of records, because he's like a DJ. Yeah. He shows him earlier his old DJing in his bedroom, <laughs> so I guess he wants to know what's on these records. Start flipping through this book, mm. crazy pictures of demonic possession and all that stuff. And yeah. she's like, I think you should put that back. You shouldn't have taken that. He kind of tells her to fuck off. I would too. I'd yeah. want to actually keep that book. Yeah, I'd keep it. <laughs> Damn right side keep it. <laughs> yeah. He throws on the records to see what's on there. It's some sermon by a priest? <laughs> like the recorded sermons back then in the 20s? <laughs> on records? Yeah, it's all unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Plays a second record. Priest talking about this book he found, which is the Necronomicon. Yeah. And he starts reading the incantations, of course, bringing back the evil dead. Ellie is going down to take some stuff down to the car because they got to move and she goes into the elevator. Rawr, rawr, of course, <laughs> rawr, rawr. Something attacks her in the elevator. We're not going to spoil the rest of the movie because it's brand new. We're only going to take you up to that point. So if you want to see how it ends, keep watching the movie. But more importantly, is it trash or treasure? First bits of treasure is the plot and the idea for the movie, which is actually uh, kind of neat. It's a refreshing take. I like the fact that it takes place in a high-rise building. It's kind of yeah. neat. It's got away from the cabin setting. Mm -hmm. And even how he finds the Necronomicon and the records is a bit different. I like it where it's actually something that's been buried. It's just not left out. Yeah, yeah, like in, in the, the basement. Yeah, yeah like in the originals, right? And it's got more of a actual, like, religious twist to it, where it's not like an archaeologist that found all this. It's actually like a priest that was into all this stuff. It's shot very well. Yeah. It's got a lot of panoramic shots and everything, and it looks great. Tell it's a big budget movie, mm -hmm. but it doesn't have that awful big budget sheen to it. Mm -hmm. It has a more of a gritty look to it, which is good, because you don't want a sheen on an Evil Dead movie. Right, yeah. And it's very dark, and it's raining too, right? Yeah. Which are perfect aspects for a horror movie. The effects in this movie are really good. Most of it seemed to be practical. It was all good and believable. Nothing looked... Fake. The gore is good too. There are some scenes that actually like made me go, ugh. Tons of blood. The cheese grater to the leg was oh, good. Oh, that was hard to watch. Because you can yeah. see the strips come yeah. off, right? The strips. <laughs> Like you would on a block of cheese. When that kid gets stabbed in the bicep was good too. That was kind of like a, ugh. Yeah. Ah, you feel it. Ah, I felt that. The acting for this movie is pretty damn good too. It's pretty believable. Even the kids are pretty decent. One thing that really stood out for me was the sound design was really good. She's climbing out of the bathtub and you hear the fingernails on the tub. Just the sound of it, like, ugh, it kind of gets to you. And the music was pretty good, too. It actually reminded me a lot of the music uh, in the first movie. Mm. Not really music, per se, but just sounds, you mm -hmm. know, like... Diddly, diddly, diddly. Hearts back to the original, and more importantly, it works within yeah, the movie. exactly. And the setting itself is good. The high-rise apartment building is a fresh and interesting concept for an Evil Dead movie. Take it out of the secluded forest and move it into a populated area, yeah. which is sort of neat. That brings us to the trash of <laughs> Evil Dead, which on the flip side is also the setting because we really felt they didn't utilize that setting enough in this movie. Like, yeah, you have this whole high-rise apartment to use, and for the most part, they just stay in their little apartment on yeah. whatever floor it is and 
barely venture out at all. The Evil Dead, you know, sort of blocks them in, right? They like collapse this is the stairway. That's fine, but still get people from the other floors trying to help. Yeah, and try, yeah. There, there should have been more of that. More cannon fodder for the Deadites. Oh yeah, the, you know? the, actually the, the death toll in this movie, considering how bloody they wanted to go with it, isn't that high. No. And also seeing that they're in an apartment building, there should be tons of people for the Deadites to kill. And there's actually, nah, you could probably count on what? Yeah, pretty much one hand. One, maybe, maybe two, not quite all two. Long and winded way of saying they should have used more of the apartment. Yeah. More of the high rise, the stairwells, other levels, you know, all that kind of stuff. You didn't even see it. This movie gets far too bogged down in character development. Which is the opposite that I thought it was gonna be. Yeah. I thought it was gonna be just like shitty characters right to the blood and gore. But it was like, okay, there's almost too much character development to the point where you're like, okay, let's move it along It's about here. time that yeah. uh, some shit hits the fan here. It was a lot of pointless stuff too that had nothing to do with the movie. They were struggling so hard to define these characters and give them backstory and it was all useless. Yeah, it didn't matter in the grand scheme of things whatsoever. The fact that the dad is gone, so what? It could just simply be that he's not there. Yeah. You don't need a story for yeah, it. Yeah, or it could just be she's a single mom, that's it. I wasn't even wondering where's the dad. It's assumed the day and age we live in, it's a single mom. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, who gives a fuck? And then the kids with all their shit, who the fuck cares? <laughs> Yeah. Beth wasn't really used enough uh, for the hero aspect of this movie. Fell so flat. You have every opportunity to make her into an Ash character. It doesn't need to be exactly like Ash. No, but, right. but you need that aspect. Somebody to fight the dead. You didn't get that with the Beth character. It's almost like she never embraced the hero in her. It's okay if she's not the hero right off the bat. Like Ash in the first movie wasn't the hero right off the bat. He became it through the struggles he went through. Yeah. You don't really get that here. Not saying it's got to be like the first Evil Dead in that respect, but you're not fighting with her. Mm -hmm. You're not like, oh yeah, g get out alive, go get them, you know, kill the Deadites. Uh, I'm rooting for you. Yeah. You don't yeah. root for for Beth. You don't really root for anybody in this movie. Another huge problem with this movie was the pacing. It made no sense. <laughs> yeah. It was too all over the map. Well, first we mentioned it's slow to get going. Like that whole scene in the beginning with the cabin. You don't even fucking need that because these aren't main characters. They don't have nothing to do with the whole plot. So yep. you don't need that. Then all that character building in the beginning is fine, but it goes way too long. And then you're like, when are the demons gonna come out here? Yeah. And then when they do, it's like, okay, this shit's gonna hit the fan. And it doesn't. Like, the, yeah. the, the rhythm of the movie is like, it starts to pick up and you're like, okay, here we go. And it stops. And, and it literally stays stops dead. It literally dead. stops. And it's like, fuck! And then the kids start talking, and yeah. they start getting bogged down into useless dialogue. Yeah. And then it picks up again, you're like, okay, now we're gonna get into some serious shit. And then it stops. Dead. And then more useless dialogue. Get into the fucking action here. And there is a lot of pointless dialogue in this movie that doesn't need to be there at all. And that really, it hurts the pacing of the movie. You just don't say things like that when, when the world is falling apart. Mm -hmm. They just went through a bunch of shit, and then they then it stops. Are you really gonna be a mommy? <laughs> what the fuck kind of a thing to say is that? <laughs> Keep running or doing what you were yeah. doing. Deadites talk too much where it bogs it down. Just shut up already. Quit with your fucking talking in your nursery rhymes. Oh, mommy loves you. Don't you just want to kill? Yeah. Get to the point here. Far too repetitive. Oh, very repetitive. Especially with the Deadites. It's, yeah. it, it was the same thing over and over again. Stab the Deadite. Everything stops. Yeah. Ugh, crumbles. And then, oh, the Deadite's dead. Gets back up again. Attacks them. Stab. Yeah. Literally just freezes. Yeah. Yeah, and it was like, And oh. then falls over. And then gets up again and does it. Mommy loves you. Mommy's going to get you. Like, and then fuck. stab. Uh, fall down. <laughs> yeah, it's over and over again. And it was not even different deadites. Yeah. It's the same one. It was all the mother deadites. Like, it was way too much of the one mother deadite, too. They showed the mother too much. They showed her face, just the frame of her face, 
way too you much. Got, you got sick of looking at her. Yeah, honestly. yeah, exactly. Because you know, you took what is sort of a creepy, scary look, and you just simply saturated yeah. the whole fucking movie with that. Yeah. It's like, fuck, come up with something different. <laughs> Contortion shit. Yeah. Constant. <laughs> yeah. Think of something new and fresh. Yeah, it's too much of that contortion shit all the time. Far and too much. Too much of like this self-harm type stuff. If you're out there to get the humans and kill the humans, just go and kill them. Mm -hmm. Why are you wasting time hurting yourself, eating all this glass and that shit? It's just stupid. It's there for the sake of being gory and disgusting. It's got nothing to do with the plot. It doesn't move anything forward. No. It's not scary either. No. So They're just simply going for the cringe factor yeah but that's fine if you just keep that to a minimum yeah if you keep doing it it doesn't have an effect on you. right this movie also doesn't seem to commit to a tone it's too all over the place it doesn't really take the ball and run with it like mm -hmm. okay if you're gonna make a, a, a darker scarier less funny version of Evil Dead that's fine. Too all over the map. They tried to put a little bit of humor in there, and when they did, it just didn't fit because they're now trying to be too serious. Yeah, and they also put it in at the wrong spot. Yeah. And same thing with the gore. Like, if you're gonna go gore, go fucking full bore and and nail us with it. But they almost like they held back a little bit. As gory as this movie is, mm -hmm. they kind of held back with it. And it's like, if you're gonna commit to that gore, just do it and and do it. 100% full on. The trailer fools you to think it's going to be a big gore fest, and it kind of is, but you kind of come out disappointed thinking, well, I was kind of expecting a bit more. Mr. Miyagi says, I know some must talk. Walk left side of the street, safe. Right side of the street, safe. Walk in the middle, get the squish, just like grip. <laughs> that's right, yeah. And that's what I felt this movie was. It tried to kind of walk the line between all these things but never doing any of them really good they've got themes too that they don't complete in the yep. movie right everything is sort of left hanging it wasn't a great horror movie because it wasn't scary it wasn't a great gore fest movie because it wasn't gory enough it wasn't a schlocky fun horror movie because well they didn't even try it, yeah so. yeah exactly what is it then it's yeah. just kind of there it just felt like a cookie cutter possession movie that you would find on netflix just while scrolling you know yeah the possession of single mom <laughs> you know? yep this is exactly what it was yeah <laughs> and that'll bring us to the beginning and the ending of this which we're not going to spoil anything but we are going to say that both were useless you could have cut both out and just had the middle part yeah good enough the beginning with those kids at the cabin don't need it nope the ending was completely ridiculous and took you out of any realism in the fucking movie yeah the woman comes down to the parking lot after shit just hit the fan talking on her phone like oh i didn't get much sleep last night because the thunder kept me up well what about the people screaming and yeah. dying and the deadites and the world is basically ending and you didn't notice <laughs> yeah like come on <laughs> Come on, <laughs> fuck's sakes. It's just ridiculous. In the beginning, they're going for that punch, right? To hit you. Yeah. Okay, here we go. It didn't connect with the rest of the fucking movie. It was standalone. Until the end. But at that point, who cares? Yeah. It, and then the end didn't have anything to do with the rest of the movie either. And it was meant to be that last punch. But you yeah. could have had that with the real characters. Yeah, not introduce a character that you never saw throughout the rest of the movie. End the movie with that person that you don't care about yeah. and haven't been invested in. <laughs> So they shit the bed. Yeah. Like, they totally shit the bed on that. So, Evil Dead Rise, trash or treasure? Uh, you know what? Hold on, I gotta think about this for a second. My vote is that it's trash. I'm gonna have to vote trash, too. Not that it's a horrible, bad movie. It just didn't do it yeah. for me. And I'll probably never watch it again. Exactly, that's my sentiment, too. I'll never watch it again, so trash. It was kind of just there. Yep. The movie was just there, and I was actually bored throughout the movie. There was parts of the movie where I'm like, fuck, if, if I was streaming this right now and didn't have to pay for it, mm -hmm. I would just turn it off. To say that an Evil Dead movie is boring <laughs> yeah. is absurd, but it was. like, And there was lots going on, lots of action and gore, but it was paced so poorly where it was boring. It was paced so poorly, and there was so much repetitiveness. A lot of repetitiveness, and a lot of 
dialogue that didn't need to be there to drag the whole thing down. Exactly. We're sitting there, the lights went up, you know, credits roll, produced by Sam Raimi, Bruce Campbell, Robert Tappert. Who cares? So what? You yeah. know, that, that doesn't mean they actually had input on it. Maybe they did, but it just didn't work for us. Yeah, so. yeah. And the fact that they praised the film, well, they have to, because if they don't, they're going to get in shit and lose their careers. Yeah, like Ghostbusters 2016, Dan Aykroyd super praising it. He knew it was garbage. Yeah. Exactly. He all came out years later and said that ah, wasn't that good. You but know? you have to you say. You have to say that, you know? Yeah. I <laughs> sighed a lot yeah, in this movie. Me too, yeah. Like, <sighs> yeah. <laughs> That's um, just our opinion. Don't go around calling us a bunch of what, member berries, whatever the fuck that <laughs> means. Because it's got nothing to do with that. It just simply, we don't think this movie worked as a horror movie. Or an Evil Dead movie. Yeah. At all. No. So, on that note, until next time, we will have to keep drinking. <laughs>